And then fourth one is Pentecost or Shavuot, okay? Which is important because starting uh, Passover next week, Passover is basically the crucifixion of Yeshua, of Jesus, right? And then unleavened bread starts, and then first fruits is the resurrection, of, of Yeshua. So it's all like, it's exactly, exactly a set, you know, everything has this parallel. Okay. So, um, let's see, uh, I can read, let's go to Leviticus 23, 15, 21. We're still going to be going through the, um, the feast of Shavuot. Okay. To understand it. So in uh, Levit Leviticus uh, 23, 15 through 21, it says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So he's telling you how to calculate, how to get to Shavuot, how to get a Pentecost after, you know, uh, Passover, basically. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days, and ye shall offer New meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your inhabitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. You shall be, it shall be a fine flour. It shall be baked with leaven. They, they are the first fruits unto the Lord. So this is, you know, obviously they're getting very specific. They're telling you now after uh, Passover and us eating unleavened bread, now they're actually telling us, all right, it's time to eat bread again. So we're, we're uh, actually commanded to make two uh, loaves of bread so you can eat your two loaves of bread you don't have to eat both loaves that might be a lot of carbs right okay 18 and ye shall offer with bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year and one young bullock and two rams they shall be for a burnt offering unto the lord with their meat offering and their drink offering even offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the lord so make it juicy okay then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord, Yahuwah. With the two lambs they shall be holy unto the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever, forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Very important. He said, and you shall do these things just until the Old Testament finishes, right? No, he didn't say that. He said, you shall do these things forever through all generations, okay? Now, a lot is going on there. You're probably like, I, I read these verses. It's Old Testament. And you're like, what? What am I going to do? I'm going to sacrifice lambs and, and goats and do all these things? No, of course not. Now, one of the things that I would like to maybe clarify, a lot of times when we start talking about the feast and, and the commandments and we get into the Old Testament, and a lot of churches today automatically start looking at you like dude that's for the jewish people right i mean that's not for us we're the church you know jesus Yeshua came he died for our sins he's the, the 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 new lamb right true so a lot of times the church today has kind of steered us away from the whole scripture and kind of uh, is pretty much saying we don't have to do any of those things anymore remember remember jesus fulfilled fulfilled it right who fulfilled the law right so we don't have to do these things anymore obviously we don't have to you know practice any of these things but see what does fulfilled mean a lot of times people think fulfilled means to complete but really it means to fill up when you look into the actual greek and hebrew it means that jesus came to complete the law to to, to finish it but not to do away with it See, a lot of times we're like, oh, he came to do away with the law. And that is not what we're going over today. Now, um, we don't sacrifice lambs and goats anymore, right? Please don't, okay? We don't do those things no more, right? Now, why don't we do those things? This is another thing that people kind of, kind of trip up on, right? Uh, one of the main things that the church says today, we don't do these things anymore because Yeshua was the ultimate sacrifice, right? He was the unblemished lamb, and that is true. But 
what about the people in Jerusalem today? Jewish people, they don't do sacrifices anymore. And they don't believe in Yeshua, most of them, right? The rabbinical Judaism. So why don't they do it anymore, right? Question. The reason is, in order for you to do these sacrifices and all the, 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 the things that the, the scriptures is telling us to do, a lot of things have to be in place. There has to be a temple, there has to be a, a working order priesthood, right? There has to be a tabernacle. There has to be all these things that come together in order for, for us to be able to do these things. Obviously, we're, they don't have access to these things anymore. They don't have access to the temple. They don't have access to tabernacle. There's no working priesthood, Levitical priesthood, right? Uh, so we don't do those things because we know that Yeshua came. Jesus came and died for our sins. He's the ultimate sacrifice. So that's why. But at the same time, even if we didn't know that, we still couldn't do those things because we can't. You know, we're not able to. But we can still observe the other things. The Jewish people in Jerusalem, they still, they still celebrate Passover. They still will eat their lamb and they'll still eat unleavened bread. They are able to still follow certain criteria. Just, when the, just like when the people of Israel, remember when they were taken into Babylon, Right? They were taken into Babylon, and, and they, they didn't have the temple anymore. They didn't have the priesthood. But they were still practicing Daniel and, and you know, all of them. They were still practicing the Passover and the feast, okay? All right. Any questions so far? And y'all can ask questions, and I'll make them up if I can. All right. <laughs> the two loaves of breads uh, that, that are, are given on, the, um, on Shavuot, uh, represent they kind of say they represent the Ten Commandments the two tablets or the two sticks the northern kingdom and Judah when they come together okay so um, God Elohim told Moses to tell them four things and he promised them four things and we kind of went over this a couple weeks ago but it says I will deliver you from slavery check right I will redeem you check I will take you to be my people, check, and I will bring you into the land. What? The promised land, check, right? So God completed his covenant with Moses, right? Exodus 6, 6 through 8 says, Wherefore say unto you, the children of Israel, I am the Lord, Yahuwah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of the bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment and I will take you to be for a people I will be you uh, to you a God Yahuwah and ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahuwah your God Elohim which bringeth you out from the burdens of the Egyptians verse 8 and I will bring you you into the land concerning which I, I did swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to, uh, you for a heritage. I am the Lord Yahuwah. Okay, so right here, very important. Feast of uh, um, Shavuot, Feast of Pentecost. We were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. What is Why is this day so important? This is is our marriage day right this is our wedding day this is when the people of israel were delivered out of egypt right they were free from bondage right and and, and pharaoh died and they were they were totally free then they go to 50 days later moses is on the uh, mount sinai right he receives the ten commandments he receives the law this is very significant because, see, the people of Israel, he separated them. He made a covenant with them, right? But then when, when Moses received those commandments, now they knew exactly what to do. They knew how to act. They knew what not to do. They knew what was sin and what was not sin. All these things were, were clear because they were written. God had given it to Moses, and now it was like a huge ordeal. Basically, he was giving his wedding vows and saying, I take you to be my people, and I shall do this and this and this, and I will protect you, and I will do this and this and this. And we, the people, we are now the people, we're part of Israel, we also committed to the Lord and said, we will be a part, and we will abstain from other gods and doing all this, and we will accept you, and we get married. Boom! Shavuot, 
We get married. It's a wedding day. So if, anytime, if, how many people are not married here? That might be a good day to uh, actually celebrate your wedding or something, your wedding anniversary, instead of Valentine's. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone picks that day. But so that was our wedding day, okay? Obviously, the people of Israel, we know the story. Right away, they went off and they started worshiping. They, they did it literally that day. Now, one of the things that I think is very, very um, important, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, when when Yeshua, when, when Yahuwah, God, gave the commandments to Moses, it's very significant to what we're going to go over in a little bit, the Feast of Pentecost with the disciples, right? See, when God gave the commandments, supposedly it was like thunder and lightning and like big, big sounds of wind and stuff like that, like almost like an earthquake, right? And what a lot of historians and people have talked about is that it was given out in every language, tongues. You know, this is important, okay? And it was heard throughout, some even say throughout the whole world. You know, at that moment, there was, it's a huge event in our history, right? And uh, so a lot of times we think that the people of uh, Israel, they were down there making the golden calf, and they were up there, and Moses is dead, and this and that. But they heard all this. They heard all this thunders and roars, right? So this was a huge event that happened, okay? <clears throat> Okay, now, so we're talking about the wedding ceremony. Okay, in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 32, it says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord Yahuwah. So Jeremiah literally is telling us right here that we were married to them, but we broke the covenant. You know, so it's kind of like, I guess there's not many people married here, right? <laughs> is it just me and Juan? I mean, not, we're not married. Like, we're, we're actually married. No, no, like, <laughs> he has his wife. I have a wife. Okay. How would it feel if you go on your wedding day, right? And this is for y'all younger people. You get married to your wife or your husband. And you, you, know, you, you declare your love and you say I do and you give your vows, right? <clears throat> and then the next day or a couple of days after, you pretty much go and you say, you know what? All that stuff I said on my wedding day, I'm not really going to do it. I know I'm supposed to like be faithful to you. I know that wasn't my vows. I know I said till death do us part, but yeah, that's a long time. Uh, I know through sickness and in health, uh, I mean, if you're sick, you're on your own, babe. You know, I'm going to go off with my friends and stuff like that. I can guarantee you, if, if you did those things, how long do you think that marriage is going to last? It's probably not going to be a very good marriage, right? And uh, that would obviously look bad, right? People probably wouldn't do those things. But see, that is what we're doing today in a lot of ways. We got married. Yeshua, Yeshua took us as his bride. And instead of us being faithful to him, a lot of times we are being unfaithful by doing other things, by doing other practices, by, by doing these pagan practices, by so many things, by not reading the scripture, by all these things. And we have to start understanding, reading that God, Yeshua, his Holy Spirit gives us revelation. Uh, I was talking to the pastor earlier, and one of the things that uh, he said that was very, very, uh, that kind of made me think is that, see, a lot of times God conceals his wisdom. He conceals his knowledge, You believe it or not. And sometimes the only way that he gives you the ability to start understanding is he has to reveal it to you through his spirit, through his, uh, the Ruah, right? That is why a lot of times we can read the word, we can hear people preach. I can be preaching right now, and it's like, walk, 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 right? But a lot of times we don't understand it. You know, we don't receive that revelation, and I'm going to tell you why. This is the same thing that, you know, my, my dad, the pastor, 
he has been preaching to me about these Jewish feasts and stuff for all, pretty much all that we've been Christian. And it never clicked to me. It never, it just, it just didn't really click to me until I started seeking it out. And still I started studying. That is when it started hitting me. And I was like, wow, all of a sudden these things make sense. Why? But see, Yeshua, Jesus is not, he gives you the information, right? He gives you his prophets or preachers or whatever to, to go out and preach to you, right? He gives you access, but that doesn't mean that you're going to understand it. Remember, he says, I only give eyes to see and ears to hear. Doesn't mean that you're going to grasp it. The only way that you're going to grasp it is you have to seek it out. You have to seek it out. When you start doing that, then that's when the Spirit gives you revelation, and that's when you understand. A lot of times, remember when the disciples, uh, or they asked him, uh, Jesus, why do you speak in parables? You know, have you ever understood? Like, why do you, why do you speak in parables? Why, basically, why are you speaking in riddles all the time? And, and Jesus basically said, the reason that I speak in parables is because this wisdom, this knowledge, is only for the, the, the chosen few. It's only for the ones that, that, that are deemed uh, acceptable, uh, that are the ones that are able to seek. Then I reveal it to them. That's why the rest of the world, they can hear the word. They can hear over and over. You can preach them, preach them, and, and you plant the seed. But the, in, until they start seeking it out, until we start seeking it out, that is when Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, starts revealing to you, and then you start waking up. And then all of a sudden, things make sense. Amen. So we're going to start seeking it out, amen? we got to be that generation that wakes up. we got to be that generation that, that doesn't keep going with the flow, that doesn't keep going with um, uh, the world. Man, I didn't start the timer, so you're going to have to keep me on time. Um, okay, so... Um, so finally, we know that it's a marriage uh, covenant, you know, and, and uh, basically the wedding vows that Yeshua gives us is, is basically the Torah, the law, right? Everyone, when I say Torah, that means the law, right? Or commandments, okay? When we receive Messiah and commit to following him, we become part of God's people, Israel. Israel's story becomes ours too. Thus, we make those same wedding vows to keep all that Yahuwah has spoken. That is what Shavuot is all about. It's a wedding anniversary. It's the day to remember and celebrate that day that Elohim, God, took us to be his people. Israel was saved by God's grace and then given the Torah, the law, the commandments, as the way to walk out their relationship with God, to put it in, basically to put it in New Testament terms, faith apart from works, is dead. So, not to get too complicated, are we still following along, right? He gives us the commandments. He gives us his vows. Why? So there's no excuse. Now we understand how to follow. He says, do this, do that, do this, do that, do that, okay? This is what sin is, right? Everyone remember a couple, a couple weeks ago, what is the definition of sin? What is the definition of sin? The correct definition of sin is transgression of the law okay hasn't changed we all still believe that god is the same yesterday today and forever right everyone with me on that so that doesn't so what i if if y'all want if anything i want y'all to leave today understanding of course the feast of shavuot very important it's our wedding anniversary you don't want to forget your wedding anniversary those that you are not married, eventually, y'all understand, don't forget your wedding anniversary, especially you guys. Y'all don't want to forget it. I always remember, right? Yeah. December 22nd, bam, you know? Got it. When's your wedding anniversary, Juan? Burm, burm. Too late. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, 60 minutes? Okay. So, very important. We need to remember our wedding anniversary. So, that means in, after Passover, after we celebrate Passover, we should plan something together. Maybe we, we get together as a, as a congregation, or maybe you just get together with your family. But, but make that day special, okay? 50 days, and I'll kind of let you know when the date is, but make that day special. Why? Because that is your anniversary with our Father, the creator of everything, you know? 
And a lot of times we just kind of just look away from these things. And, and sometimes I, I feel convicted. It's like, man, God, Yahuwah, Yeshua, everything that he's done for us. And on our wedding anniversary, we don't even know. And it's not totally our fault because we are not taught. But then we go around and we celebrate other festivals and stuff like that, you know. And that is where we get in trouble. So they leave the, prom they leave the Mount Sinai. We talked about this. And they wander in the wilderness, right? How, how many years did they go into the wilderness? 40 years, right? Wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Exactly parallel of, of us today. We have been freed. The, the Israelites were freed from the bondage of the Egyptians. We were free from the bondage of sin. They were resurrected out of the Red Sea. When Pharaoh and the Egyptians died, they were free, ready to go to the promised land which is heaven, representing the, the kingdom of heaven. We were free when Jesus, Yeshua, died on the cross. We were free, free from the bondage of sin. But we haven't got to the kingdom of heaven yet, right? Not yet. We're not dead yet, okay? We are wandering in the wilderness, wandering in the wilderness, right? Now, remember, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that generation, that first generation, basically, uh, that came out of the Red Sea, only two people came out into the, uh, into the promised land, right, which represents heaven. It was Joshua and Caleb, right? I think it was like 20, anyone 20 years and uh, it was the exact that didn't make it, okay? Let's just call them the wilderness generation, right, the first wilderness generation. We today need to understand and need to grasp because if there's any kind of parallel to this, only two people make it. That's why in the in, in the in scripture it says the, the the gate is very narrow, you know. So we have to be careful. We have to read scripture. We have to ask Jesus Yeshua for guidance. You know, one of the things that uh, kind of kind of uh, parallel to me. I don't know if it has any significance, but who delivered? Who was the one that delivered uh, uh, the the people of Israel into uh, across the Jordan? right, into the promised land. Remember, Moses, he didn't make it, right? He didn't cross over. It was his um, understudy, right? It was Joshua, right? <clears throat> if you go to the translation, actually, of Jesus, then you go into Yeshua. But when you translate, they're actually correct. I don't know why when they translated uh, Yeshua or Yahushua to English, somehow they came up with the name Jesus, but really, really translated, if you really do it right, it's actually Joshua, you know? The name uh, Yeshua in English is Joshua. So I just thought it was kind of cool. It was like, okay, Joshua was the one who led the people of Israel into the promised land. Today, who's going to lead us into the promised land, to heaven? Joshua again. Again. So just another parallel. It's like all these parallels are coming out like more and more. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat. Okay, so uh, we're going to get to the second part, and I, I probably, what, like 10 minutes or maybe less? Okay. Now, we, we're we getting out of the Exodus, okay? We got the commandments, wedding anniversary, okay? What is the next huge event that happened on Shavuot, on Pentecost? That's what we're going to go over. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm going to... Is it okay if I read a little bit? Maybe I'll actually help have someone to help me a little. I'm going to read some verses, and then I'll pick somebody else. So y'all start deciding who wants to read. So I don't have to read it all. It's Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8. And we should be good with this because we've been going over our Acts questions and stuff like that. Oh, thanks, babe. <clears throat> okay. It says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit, the Ruha HaKodesh, is when it comes upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. <clears throat> Acts 2, uh, 2, 1 through 21. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. Now, we're talking about now the disciples, right? The disciples, Jesus had died, he resurrected, he was with them for a while, and then he ascended to heaven, right? Okay, 
And then the disciples were all together. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Again, another time where there's this huge sound and like thunder and mighty wind coming upon, okay? Paralleling the first time at Mount Sinai. Okay, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as part as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ruha, and it began to speak with other tongues and the spirit gave them utterance. So again, we have this thing of tongues. Remember when Moses was giving out the, the uh, I mean, when Yeshua was getting the commandments to Moses, it was all these tongues and it was thunder and wind and all this stuff, right? Then we fast forward a couple thousand years. Yeshua ascended to heaven. The disciples are there. They're, they're not, they're ready, but they're not. But then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And boom fire like that like i'm not fire but like it felt like fire but it was this wind and thunder the holy spirit fell upon them and that is what they gave them power even to the point where they were speaking different languages right uh, a lot of times <clears throat> we might think that they were speaking languages like sometimes we hear people speaking in tongues but no they were literally speaking other languages you know uh, they were speaking languages. Why? Because this is the Great Commission. This is when Yeshua was saying, I'm going to baptize you all with the Holy Spirit so you can be able to speak other languages, so you can go to other nations and preach the gospel, right? So a huge Shavuot again, the Feast of Pentecost, the anniversary of the Lord. This is what happened, okay? And, and there in the dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this... When this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, aren't, aren't not all these which speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, whereas where we are born? So basically, they're like, dude, what's going on? Aren't these all like people from like uh, like of us today? Aren't these all people from Baytown? Don't they all speak English or Spanish? But they're all speaking all these crazy languages. How is this possible? You know, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, does someone else want to help me read? Okay, uh, where did I leave off? Verse 8? Okay, verse 9. Okay. Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Ar Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. Keep reading. Uh, yeah. To where? Uh, I guess the end. That's 14. So. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And we can step there. Amen. Okay. That was a lot of uh, hard words there. That's why I, I wanted someone else to read it. <laughs> uh, so basically, right there, it's talking about, um, you know, they were all baptized, different tongues and stuff. I like what Peter also said, because they were like, are these people drunk? And he was like, what? It's barely 3 o'clock. Come on. No one gets drunk before 3 o'clock, you know, basically he was saying. Uh, but uh, at the end, it's kind of giving... Um, uh, a little bit of what's going to happen in the future. It's talking about the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood where there 
uh, before the great and notable day of the uh, the Lord. When is that day? The day of the Lord. That is the next resurrection. Resurrection. The gathering, right? The rapture, what they call. Okay? We are going to be gathered together, and we are going to be resurrected into our new bodies. That is the goal. How do we get to that point? I believe today that we as a church have to um, take things to the next step. I do think that we are living in um, the last days. How many agree with me on that? How many believe that we are living in the last days, right? Um, I do believe that we as a church have to start separating ourselves more and more from the paganism, from from the uh, the you know the traditions, the man-made traditions that we have been brought up to. Leaven represents man-made traditions, by the way. You know that's what Jesus Yeshua was opposed to. Remember the Pharisees and Sadducees? He called them hypocrites because they were acting like they were practicing the law and the commandments, but they weren't. They were practicing all their man-made traditions and commandments, and they were trying to put it upon on Jesus, and that's why Jesus outsmarted them every time. He was like, no, 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 this is not right. This is not right. Y'all made this up. Y'all made this up. This is what's in the commandments, okay? We have to get back, if you want to say, how to say it, back to basics, right? We have to study our scripture. We have to seek out that knowledge so the Holy Spirit reveals to you and gives you that revelation. And little by little, you will start becoming more convicted about certain things. You might, be, you might do things today, celebrate things today, buy things today, uh, watch things today. But once you start understanding and the, and the Spirit starts guiding you, you're going to be like, man, I can't believe I, I used to do that. Or I used to go over here or hang out with them or watch this or, or buy that. You know, little by little, the Lord is taking you out. He's taking you out of Babylon, out of Egypt, and saying, follow me. The, the gate is very narrow, my children. But if you follow my ways, if you follow my commandments, accept me as, as your Lord and Savior, then I'm here. You, I, you're welcome to the promised land. And I will give you my spirit to guide you and my law, and my Torah, so you know what sin is. Amen? Because we do not say, and I constantly like to iterate the, the, when, when the verse, uh, it's very similar to the, the to ten virgins, right? Uh, Lord, Lord, uh, you know, we preached and prophesied in your name and, and, and did all these things in your name and worshipped you in your name and, you know, uh, evangelized all these things. And then the Lord is going to say, I don't know you. Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. What does that mean, lawlessness? We already know. Lawlessness is transgression of the law, which is sin. Right? He's basically saying, you who practice sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. So what does that mean? Are we supposed to start doing all the laws and commandments in Deuteronomy and um, in Numbers and Leviticus and all these things? It's something that we need to start looking into, start understanding and focusing on. Because right now, we are basically a church that pretty much says, we accept the Lord, He is our Savior, and through grace, we're free. True, just like the, uh, the, 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 the Israelites, they were free from bondage. But that doesn't mean they got a free card into heaven. They still went through trials and tribulations. And in today's day, I know we are tempted with so many things, but it, it's it's it. We're not being persecuted or anything like that. There goes my timer. We're right now. We, it's very still very easy to follow Jesus Yeshua. Right? They're not people going out trying to kill us. There will become a time coming soon when they won't let you have your script or your Bible, or if you're praying or going to church or something, they're not going to let you do those things. And it might be a very very soon future. Right now, we have the access to do these things. This is the time to ground ourselves, to, to make ourselves solid, because when the temptation really comes and the persecution comes, it's going to be very hard to stay firm. 
We have to stay firm as a congregation, as brothers and sisters. We have to do that. And how do we do it? By coming together, reading scripture, asking guidance from the Holy Spirit. Amen? We will finish up here. Um, Man, there's still a lot that we need to go over. Uh, I might have a couple more minutes before we have to go back in. This week... Coming up is Passover that we're going to celebrate, right? Is everyone coming here Thursday? Is everyone going to be here Thursday night service? Okay. So basically, Thursday night service is what we're going to basically say it's Passover, right? Passover is also going to be the day that they crucified Jesus. That's why they're doing the drama and stuff like that. Okay? We have to, let's try to start thinking about it and being a little more serious. And if you can even go to the next step, maybe get rid of your leaven and and stuff like that. Get rid of your pinguinos and cakes and stuff like that and cookies or whatever. You look into it. See what what qualifies and what's not. You know, uh, I'm not a judge and I'm not going to try. But but start start thinking, uh, Lord, I do want to practice your appointed times. You know, I do want to start understanding my anniversary with you, these things are important. And forgive me for not being able to do them right, but I'm going to do the best I can, right? Like the analogy of a, your little kid coming up to you and drawing a picture of a house or something. You're like, wow, you know, it's not that good. But, but you're like, you're touched by it, right? Because you're like, that's beautiful, you know, because they're doing the best they can, right? And that's the way I feel that we are. We're like little kids, and we're trying to do the best that we can. But at least we're trying. And at least we're acting. Faith without works is dead, right? What is faith? Works are the effects of faith. You have faith, the effects are works. And what are works? Doing, following his commandments. Doing those things. Not just, a lot of people say, I have faith. And they just say they have faith and they do whatever they want. They believe There's a difference between believing and having faith. Faith has results. Belief, I mean, it's just belief, dreams, or whatever. Let us stand. Let us go ahead and stand, and we'll finish up today. Um, So I tell you today, um, you know, you, you guys, young generation, I do think that y'all are the generation that has the most potential to be able to, cons- to, to, be able to seek out this wisdom and to be able to, to evangelize to the world, to all nations. But at the same time, y'all are going to be hit hard with temptations and persecutions. We have to be grounded. So on that day when God says, you know, when, we're, when he comes to the door, he will, he will bring us in and close the doors but we will be in. We will be that those five virgins with the oil and with the lamps. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Father, Yahuwah, Adonai, Elohim, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, we come before you and we worship you. We bless you we, and we give you all the praise. We thank you, Father God, for this privilege. We thank you, Father God, the, the, the ability that we may be, seek out your scripture, that we may understand your appointed times, that we may understand your commandments and your rules and, 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 and the way we want to walk the way you walked. And we want to do the things that you told us to do. We ask, Father God, for clearance in our minds that we may be able to see and hear, Father God, your word, and that we may be able to push out the things of the world, the paganness of the world, the temptations of the world that are constantly, constantly trying to trick us and trip us up, that we may fall short of the gospel of of, of, of grace. But we know if we believe in you and we accept you and we follow your commandments, that you will save us because you shed your blood on Calvary for us, and we are now free from sin and death. In Yeshua's name, we worship you, and we give you praise. And in Jesus, in Yeshua's name, we say, amen. Well, God bless everybody, and uh, we will see you Thursday. Amen.